Hi there, it's Tanya from Tatty Treasures. So today is another Lazy Sunday, so thank you very much for joining me. And we're going to take a, a closer look at The Undercliff by Elaine Franks, which is a sketchbook of Exmouth. So we'll have a quick read of the, of the blurb at the front. And... <clears throat> I treasure it myself for its solitude, its silence, it, its sheer beauty. Memories from different pasts and cultures. For me, it's primarily a fascinating area, a wonderful nature reserve, but quite simply one of those places one always thinks of, same as a poem or a piece of music, not quite of this world or of this world as it should be, but so largely isn't. So this book is set in Exmouth, which is in Devon, <laughs> and it's in a nature reserve. Um, and it says, a territory of shifting ground and tumbling rocks and vegetation where wildlife can th thrive, undisturbed by man. The range of habitats in this area is remarkable, from cliff faces <clears throat> to dense woodland, freshwater ponds, open rockish shrub, seashore, seashore, and gives a natural history illustration uh, the opportunity to observe an abundance of flora and fauna in startling landscape. The studies in this book are the work of an exceptionally gifted young artist. Here, Elaine Franks has set rare standards for a natural history illustration. Her knowledge, observation, and above all, mast mastery <laughs> technique have shown the fragi fr oh dear, the, how fragile a, a butterfly's wings are um, with, with pollen dusting a bee and soft feathering of a heron. Action sketches reinforce the most exquisite paintings and show how the birds and animals move and forage amongst the dense vegetation of the undercliff. And of insects, she writes, I know of no richer colour than the electric green of a shiny-backed fly basking in the sun, or the construction more impressive <coughs> than the precision of engineering of a beetle. To me, each insect seems like a, a miracle. I hope my paintings of both reptiles and insects will transmit my enthusiasm for them and do them some service for with the only species that can truly appreciate their beauty. A wonderful writer. So let me just move that little bit uh, out of the way to give us a little bit more room. I think this one does... Oh, no. I don't know if it goes by months or or what. So this is all telling you about the area and all the rest of it. I'm guessing this is telling you all about Elaine Franks. And then we start off... So it's it's more of um, the Pacific. So this is like lanes and fields. So these are the things that she saw in the lanes and and the fields in in this area. So is this a partridge? Yeah, partridge and hedgerow butterflies. So you can see that they lay in the rags. And yeah, very detailed step by step. This is beautiful. Who would think that a, a style was uh, that attractive? Very, very nice. So, oh, look at this green finch. What a beautiful picture that is. And then she's got some close-ups, different positions of it. It's sitting and a grasshopper. I love how the, you've got the sketch and the coloured piece. That's very, very nice, even for a grasshopper. Common blue butterfly and white clover. 
but yeah the sketch and the colors look look amazing it makes it look even more dramatic so what's this oh a stone chat this is more like well all the sea and stuff's there we were supposed to go to devon um this year and a big bumblebee and toad flax and all the, the bees on it oh snake not a great fan but I love how she's actually drawn the, the skeleton of it because that is supposed to be a very good artist yeah I've got to understand um how things work and, and move and things so this is on the cliffs nice writing as well uh, if he was using you know the pages and this is a moth so it's showing you from it being a caterpillar beetles and a lizard, some strawberries. <coughs> Which does actually tell you the month as well, but um yeah, it's going in <coughs> in habitat rather than actual months. That is stunning. Bullfinches, beautiful birds. Look at this backdrop. Oh, purple orchid. <laughs> and ladybirds look how many different varieties there is obviously there's lots of information about uh, the you know the pictures beautiful is that, is that a gladioli i thought it was an iris sure it's an iris Oh, it's called a gladden. Well, no, it's new for me. I wonder if it is a species of, of iris. I, I shall Google it. Wood mouse. Very cute. Love all these sketches. Very, very sweet. Spotted woodpecker. Look at those wings with that blue in. Looks a really nice blue, that does. Ash tree. Holly blue with some holly and ivy. I wonder if it is attracted then to, to the holly bush. I wonder if that's why it was called um, the holly butterfly. I'm guessing so. Little wren and honeysuckle. I love honeysuckle. It's beautiful. A shrew. Oh dear, poorly shrew. Look at the colours in this. That is absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Reminds me a little bit of the winter kit that I've just been working with. Um, that was obviously in blues, but this kind of um painting very very nice love the dramatic bits of black in it beautiful a black cap i don't know what this is a rock rock rose it's not something i've ever seen but obviously it must just grow in the badges oh it's very timid. I've never seen a badger. Nottingham catch fly. Didn't know he had a catch fly. Mm -mm, lovely. <laughs> Some brambles. So yeah, every page is, is beautiful. Lots of, you know, using full pages. And cutting things out, make some actual nice journals, 
you know, just with the with the pages. These pages can be taken out, so you could um, put them upright in a journal, just cut them down, or just use them that way. And say so the last couple of books that <laughs> we've looked through have actually been glued in, so you've not been able to take the both um, sides of the page out. This is beautiful, even though it's a load of trash that has been been left. Uh, yeah, beautiful colours. I must really like this. I, I guess it's like a dappled effect, is it? It's like like dabbing on and on and off. Oh, Roe dear. Pretty. Oh, damn, fabulous. Oops. Lost, lost a cone. Primrose. I do love the primroses and some daffodils. Tawny Owl. Love that night time. Be nice to do a, like a night time kind of botanicals but I bet you it would be hard to to find enough things to to fill it oh, beautiful I can remember looking at this before and absolutely loving this page love the colours oh little doll mouse this is a very nice page and so it's got so much information on on each each of the drawings the black bear's head sycamore tree with its seeds what we call moustaches <laughs> my, my little girl always putting them to her top lip and saying that she'd got a moustache Fox. That's beautiful. Pale wood violet. Very nice picture that. <clears throat> Ferns. I once saw a, a documentary of it filming, you know where they do that we see something growing very well fast but slow so you actually see it all curl up and that um i love watching things like that so they obviously film it over you know a long period of time and then shorten it up because <laughs> with the naked eye if you visited it every day you wouldn't quite notice the differences but when it's um like that it's very dramatic not not hatch i've never seen a not hatch i'm guessing they only live in certain certain terrains green woodpecker oh a bat look at this squirrel So this is a grey squirrel, isn't it? Hedgehog. Oh, they always look sad, don't they? There's something about their eyes. My favourite bird, goldfinches. Absolutely stunning. I've spoke about it before, but um, I did. I did learn their call, so I could. Um, hear them <clears throat> when they was near the garden because um, I do love seeing them on the garden that's beautiful dragonfly a marsh tit Look. I don't know what colour it is it is. It doesn't say the colour that it is. 
I think it is black and white, to be honest. I think I can remember seeing it in a bird book. Oh, goodness, what's this? That's horrendous. Oh, I like this grass, though. Lovely cream, cream paper. The paper's really, really nice, nice quality. Very nice. And it is glossy, but it's not super glossy. A lot of them are quite matte. Um, frogs. I love frogs. We always get frogs in our pond. And now we've got the big pond. We've um, just done a little water hole. But, I don't know, a couple of feet. So hopefully the frogs will come back. Cause we must have had them for about five, six years. Keep visiting. Water shrews. Oh, look at this. That's stunning. Oh, imagine being able to paint that. Or draw it. <laughs> You've got to draw it first, haven't you? Beautiful. Foxglove. We all love the foxglove. Mine did really well this year. I think I don't think they even grew last year. And I, th I thought that I lost them. But this year they've come back. So I do wonder if, um, if they do do that. Some rabbits in the fields. Oh, that's a pretty page. Orange tipped butterfly. And this is called garlic mustard. That's that. And that's lady smock. Little mole. <laughs> Heron. We've uh, got a big metal heron up at the pond, hoping that um, we don't get any real herons visiting. Because it's surprising how they sense, you know, that you have got some, some water. It's really very nice. On the shores, I mean, at the end, that's not just say I just <clears throat> that caught me eye in Nottingham because that's where where I live. And she went to the Trent Polytechnic, which is in Nottingham, and did graphic design. Hmm, very interesting. So thank you very much for sharing this beautiful book with me i have put it in uh, the amazon link at the bottom so i shall speak to you soon bye for now